What's good, my guy? What's going on, man? So, a quick question for you. Do you know what it means to be verbally abused? Uh, I don't know, man. No, no, I don't know. What yeah, about you, sir? Do you know Do you know what it means to be verbally abused? I have no idea, bro. No idea? No. So, you ain't never been verbally abused at a workplace by your family, your friends, no, a bully, nobody? No, man. You tell me what it means? Verbally abused? Okay, well... I'm going to give you my definition, but I think it's best if we give you the professional definition. All right, gentlemen. So according to the professionals, it means to abuse without physical contact, but simply by using insults. So does that sound familiar to you? You ever been verbally abused at a job or by anybody? You, you haven't been? What about you, sir? You haven't? Well, I got a story for you. I have been verbally abused, and most of all, I've been bullied by managers, and I think it's time I speak on it, because we, we, we put up with a lot from these managers, I mean, and people of power, but at the end of the day, why are you so angry? Like, why do you need to be so derogatory and rude to your crew? So that's going to be the theme of today's episode, verbal abuse and bullying that managers cause. So... Let's jump right All into right, it. All right, you guys. Now, this has been another episode of Whoa, 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 I think it was on my why it's so important to speak up video. I kind of went into a topic that I didn't feel I needed to. I'm sorry, I did feel I needed to speak on um, more. Is that the snow cat? Well, we'll have to finish this video later. Let's hold that thought. Dude, you're an hour late. What happened? Doing what? Oh, I forgive you, I guess. So today's topic, I'm going to discuss verbal abuse. Uh, as I was just explaining to my two co-workers, verbal abuse is something that, you know, as I just stated, I'm not going to repeat it, but it's something that I'm noticing more and more of at the workplace, and it shouldn't be like that. Because growing up, I've had my fair share of bullies, and I stood up to all my bullies, and there came a time in my professional career where I had to stand up to a boss and I felt like they were bullying me and verbally abusing me but the point in this video I want to make is why is it that when you're so chill it takes you finally snapping for them to hear you out and change their behavior like where was this energy from the beginning like is it the fact that I'm built a certain way and you're built a certain way or is it the fact that you're on drugs and I'm sober what I want to express today is why you should never verbally abuse anybody. So as I stated in my video of why it's so important to speak up, when I was working at this job in 2015, uh, it was kind of like my first real job in Atlanta. And we had got this new manager. And do you guys, have you guys ever met this person who was so cool and so different when you first met them, but then they got a new position of power and they just totally showed you how fake they were or how mean and how much of a female dog they potentially are well this is the type of manager i had and this manager i'll never forget one day because what i didn't like that she did was i was a shift manager and i was always stuck on this one station and i remember getting frustrated because i said why do you always put me on this one station when i'm trying to boss up and you know basically get me off this station and because she's so fake and rude she basically called me this particular day she was like I could do whatever I want you bitch ass nigga and I did tell corporate about what she did but at the time the only option they gave me was to transfer to another store or I couldn't remember what they said but I just didn't like the way the situation was handled and I still had to put up with this BS from this manager but that comes as inspiration for today's vlog because I've dealt with so much verbal abuse over the years. This was like my very first encounter. So my second encounter, it was my very first summer. Uh, I had just relocated to Wyoming and there was this chef like, I'm not gonna 
I'm not gonna name drop, but she was very sexist. She was very rude. Like she was very Southern. I mean, you get where I'm going with this, but I never really felt like she liked me for some reason. So I always kind of stayed out her way. But this one particular instance, there was this guy on my line that I couldn't stand. Like we, we never really got along from the jump. And the sad thing is, like we both came from the same school, but that's besides the point. Anyways, this particular day, he had told a lie to me as far as how to set the line up. And my head chef yelled at me. So I went to the chef and just politely told him like, hey, this is the way I was shown from this guy. I was like, I feel like I'm being fed misinformation. And on top of that, I feel like I'm taking punches for something I didn't do. So when I presented it to the mean chef, this is the one time she had my back. She basically told me, don't listen to him. You know, if you have any questions, come to me. And we built a strong relationship from that point on. Now, let me take you back to why I mentioned how this particular chef is sexist. So there was one incident where one of the coworkers on my line had did something wrong. And basically she had kind of yelled at me bad. And I was like, hey, that's not my fault. Like I'm not responsible for that. So then the next day comes and let me let me let you guys in on something. Excuse me, let me let you in on something. Don't ever shout my name across the room. I don't care if you cut your finger off. I don't care if my phone's ringing. Don't ever shout my name across the room because I'm gonna instantly think you're trying to humiliate me. So this day, she's like, God! And I just knew from that tone, she was yelling at me. And she was like, why the F didn't you cook her chicken? And out of nowhere, I just, I don't even know what I told this girl, but I basically told her like, hey, you better leave me the F alone. Who do you think you are screaming at me like that? And she goes and lies to my chef and comes back crying. And this chef, not one second let me talk and basically called me out my name and told me that I would never get nowhere in this industry. Basically verbally abused me and wouldn't even let me talk and get my side of the story. But she believed the person that triggered me. And from that day on, I, I tried to go to HR about her and they didn't really do anything about it, but I never had built a better relationship with that chef and I never worked for her again. And I hope anybody out there that's being sexist or verbally abusive in the kitchen, like I hope your day comes to you and they terminate you because we don't discriminate in the kitchen. We believe in all shapes and sizes. And I felt like in that particular kitchen working with that chef, she was being all those things and I'm glad I never have to work for her again and I hope I never have to see her again. But that's my second instant with verbal abuse. Now this final one, this one has made the most impact in my life and this one, well, let's just get right into it. Okay, so as most of you know, I'm a certified sous chef. I've been certified four years. I've worked at two different places, technically three. One of them kind of did me dirty, but anyways, I love what I do. I'm not gonna fake who I am at the job. That's what makes me so different. In the food industry, there's a lot of substance abuse, there's a lot of bad habits, and there's a lot of addictions. So let me let, me let you guys in on something. If I have addiction to food, I'm not gonna pick up any other addictions. With that being said, I'm not gonna drink, I'm not gonna smoke cigarettes, I'm not gonna do any of the stuff that I feel is very, you know, destructive behavior because I like what I do, so I don't want something that's gonna turn me bad and mix with the job. So with that being said, as a sous chef, I'm very calm under pressure. I don't believe in taking smoke breaks, I don't believe in drinking on the job, I don't believe in any of that stuff. But unfortunately, not the people I was surrounded by did the things I did. They did the exact opposite. But I dealt with so much pressure and I dealt with so much verbal abuse and just being calm and just being the person who I am, I tend to suppress that stuff and I tend to block it out. My very first year as sous chef, I was working with a friend who was also a sous chef, and there was another person who I thought was a friend that was also a sous chef. And we were like opposites, but we were still cool. 
I didn't have the type of habits they had and they didn't have the type of habits I had, but we never mixed the two together. It's never an issue. If you're my friend and you drink, I'm not gonna judge you, you know? When we link up, of course, I'm not gonna drink with you, but that doesn't mean I'm out here judging you for what you do. So with that being said, alcohol doesn't mix with everything. This particular person I thought was my friend was out to get me. They were criticizing my work ethic. They were bad mouthing me to this other person. And on top of that, they made it seem like they were my friend just because we had a working relationship. Because the type of place I worked at, we lived where we worked, like literally is walking distance. But with that being said, this particular person was out to sabotage my work ethic because he put in this narrative that I was a mean person and that nobody liked me and that I was this angry black man. But why are you talking about all these things about me when you haven't looked at yourself in the mirror? Are you talking about me or are you talking about yourself? Because I'm calm, I'm cool. I, I believe in working under pressure and a calm demeanor. I don't believe in yelling at my employees. You know, there have been some instances where I did have to set boundaries and put my foot down, but that doesn't define me as a chef. What defines me as a chef is my demeanor. And this person was the exact opposite of me. So that's why I say, are you talking about me or are you talking about yourself? Because this is a person who I've seen made multiple people cry. This is a person who I've seen made multiple people quit, switch departments. This is a person who I've seen, first of all, I didn't have a good first impression with this person, so how do I know exactly? You get what I'm saying, like you're telling on yourself. But there was one particular day that I really needed help with something and basically I asked if they would take me to mail my packages off and this person agreed to do it. Then this person gets the other person involved who happened to be my friend and we're having breakfast and the one moment I go to throw my food away, I return to the table and my friend is nowhere to be found. And I'm blowing their phone up asking, hey, like, where are you? Like, what's going on? And they ghosted me when I needed them the most. And this really ruined our friendship because I put up with so much verbal abuse from this person and he put on this facade like he was my friend when really he was out to get me and was insecure of my work ethic. I'm young, yeah, I make mistakes, but I have fun at what I do. If I make a mistake, you pull me to the side and tell me, don't scream at me and call me names and tell me my food tastes like dog food or shit. Like, what is wrong with you? But I learned you can't work with everybody and I also learned you can't be friends with everybody and I also learned I'm very intimidating because I do my own thing and people get mad at me I don't bother nobody I try to stay out the mix I do have a good bit of friends but overall I don't bother nobody I do my job and I go home so to hear my name is so much craziness when I don't do anything it keeps me going because it lets me know I'm really intimidating people, but I don't I don't like to feel like that. I, I like to do my own thing and stay in my own lane. That's what makes me different as a sous chef. So I don't like talking about verbal abuse and this is some verbal abuse that I put up with my first year soup. But there is one last segment, but I'm gonna take a little break and I'm gonna talk about this a little later because I'm starting to refill those emotions, but just hear me out y'all don't don't quit on this video just yet all right y'all so i gotta stop my story time right now i gotta head to work whoa look look at all this damn i can't walk look at all this dang snow i could barely even walk this is a little blizzard anybody know how much feet we got last night y'all lying back there <laughs> man look at my feet I mean, you know, my boots. But yeah. Uh, Don't say you can't get the door open. Hold up. I, okay, there we go. 
Oh, come on. Come on, keep yanking it. I think they have to lower the gate. Yo, I can't fucking do that shit. No, they have to lower the gate. Well, I'm about to head to work, y'all. I'm going to finish this last segment a little later. But, yeah. In the meantime, have you ever dealt with verbal abuse at work, sir? Yes. And how did you deal with it? I just walked away. Actually, no, that's a lie. My first job, I punched a good manager in the face, and I just quit right then and there. You know, you being a lot violent on a lot of these episodes. Yeah, What's what? up with that? Hey. You was violent in the last one, talking about you beat that scammer's ass. Yeah, you tried to steal my money. Uh, well, that's right, Marty, right. But anyways, Holy yeah, so I just, this is a good vlog. I really want to encourage all y'all, like, speak up if you're being verbally abused. This isn't necessarily just for work. This is outside of work, relationships, yeah. anything. Like, don't let nobody play with you, disrespect you, like, call you out your name just because they stressed out. Because at the end of the day, what, what, it doesn't cost a dime to be nice to somebody. But... Yeah, I'm gonna stop right there. Okay, y'all, I lied to y'all. This is my final segment of verbal abuse in the workplace. And as I stated earlier in this video, how basically I feel like I was being bullied throughout my life. This time, I feel like I was being bullied at the workplace. So I'm gonna just jump right into it. Um, I've been a part of this company for quite some time and my most recent work days were not exactly the best when I worked for this company, but I like to think I did a great job in my role. So now I'm gonna bring in to where the verbal abuse took place. So my boss was giving me my props since day one. And I'm not talking about my most recent years, I'm talking about since I've started working for this company. and. For some strange reason, out of nowhere, their energy changed and I never understood why. I went from you giving me my props and telling me I'm doing a great job and you believe in me to literally getting beat up on and being felt like I was his punching bag. What I meant by that is whenever there was an issue wrong, I'm, I'm very respectful. I'll answer the question and, you know, I listen to you. Whenever there was an issue and I had an answer, I was cut off, I was came off, dismissed. And on top of that, I was humiliated. And what I mean by humiliated is I was yelled at, I was screaming my name across the room. And on top of that, when I was trying to answer the questions, I was cut the fuck off. But that, that, that was like one time that really happened. I changed my behavior, I changed my act, I fixed the problem, at least I thought I did. But then, as a boss, you realize, one, you can't talk to certain people a certain way. I'll give you a good example. If you my homeboy and you work for me, I'm gonna talk to you the same way I talk to you outside of work as I talk to you at work, because that's just who I am. Like, I'm gonna tell you something in an assertive way, but it's not gonna be to take be taken personal. And I've worked with a lot of my friends throughout the years and we've never bumped heads. But I say all that to say, not all my employees were my homeboy. Like, not all of them had his type of work ethic, not all of them, you know, vibe with me off rip. But one particular instance, I had this employee and they were just so difficult to please. I did everything I could, and eventually they no longer worked for me, but this particular individual was out to throw me up under the bus and made the comment that I was too direct. And that put a nasty taste in my boss's mouth, and I noticed from that day on, I never got the same boss again. It was like he went from listening to that one bad experience to treating me like I was just this bully on the streets but that's one instance this final instance was really the icing on the cake like I like to keep I like to keep friends in my corner and I like to keep positive people in my corner and there came a point in time where my friends was telling me like something's bothering you I can sense you got negative energy like what's wrong with you and 
as a friend, I confided in one of my close friends and I told him like, I don't like the way my boss treats me. I feel like I'm his punching bag. And on top of that, who do I talk to about this? And my friend, he's the type of person, like he doesn't let stuff bother him, but I always know when something's bothering my friend, that's why I talk to him when I sense energy's different. But he could sense that my energy was changing throughout work days and he told me if you feel like something's not right you should go to HR or go over his authority so I listened to that and I kept that in mind and this one instance just really set the it really put the icing on the cake so one of my homeboys was working for me and he had an emergency situation that's all I could say and at the time we were helping out other departments due to short staffness and I told my homie well at first he asked me is it okay if he could leave at this time because he had to handle something and I basically told him that that's okay with me but if you have to work another department you'll have to ask that particular boss if it's okay with them and that's all I left it at that I told him like I didn't mind because it's an emergency but just make sure you have permission from the other party to do that so long story short, I don't know, maybe miscommunication or whatever, but that boss had told my boss that I gave that guy permission to do what he want and he basically didn't work for him, which turned out not to be true at all. And once I seen my boss, he wasn't, he didn't look like he was in a good mood. He approached me very angrily and basically asked me what had happened. And once I explained to him, what happened, he basically cut me off and told me, that's not true, Quan. that's not what he said, like, why are you always breaking rules? But once again, I defended myself, I said, that's not exactly what happened, sir. And as I'm trying to explain myself, I'm once again cut off, and I don't even remember what he said, because at this point, I'm starting to black out. And when I black out, I tend to not listen to what you say, I tend to just respond with insults, but that's what I didn't do as he's just beating up on me with those words. I just politely took him and said, yes, chef. And then I continued to do my task and I gave myself a moment to go get some water. And at this point I run into my friend and I guess he could sense I was upset. And he was like, what's wrong? I was like, I can't take it no more. I'm going to HR. So I finally speak to someone about the way I've been feeling. and. I basically tell them like all the verbal abuse I've been putting up with and I tell them that I feel like my boss has been be treating me like his punching bag and on top of that like I don't know what I did because it's like one bad experience happened and he's never treated me the same and the comment he made that really bothered me was there was one day that one of my employees broke a rule and I basically gave him like a stern speech and told him what needed to be done. And my boss, instead of giving me props on how I handled the situation, gave me the term derogatory and that I need to work on how I speak to people. But as I'm explaining this to the person of his authority, they give me the idea. They're like, so basically your boss is accusing you of being derogatory, but he's being the exact same way to you. And that just made me think for a moment, like, yeah, that's exactly what's going on, but why? And I confided with them and I told them, like, you know, I'm making a difficult decision to respectfully part ways with this company simply because I don't feel appreciated. I feel humiliated. And on top of that, I feel like I'm being set up in a way because nothing I do is good enough. I'm, I don't get the props from the people I need props from. And on top of that, my unhappiness is starting to show. And after this talk, I did get an apology from that person. But what I want to know is, as I stated earlier in this video, why is it that when you're so chill, people don't hear you until you snap? Why did I put up with all that anyway? If I wasn't doing something right, why not pull me to the side and correct me professionally? Why humiliate me and belittle me? And I know why. 
it's because I'm little and I'm built a certain way. I mean, I don't know what else it could be. Yeah, I'm not six foot one. Yeah, I'm skinny. Yeah, I'm not an overweight person, but I get my stuff done. But you're not about to bully me in 2022 or any year. So what I want to encourage anybody out there that's been verbally abused or is currently being verbally abused, speak up. If it's at the workplace, go, do something about it. Just recently, I've experienced the encounter with verbal abuse, not amongst myself, but I witnessed it and it made me uncomfortable because I know how the individual felt because that was me back then. But I say all this to say in 2022, I'm making a decision to step away from the kitchen life and focus on other things. This verbal abuse that I've experienced throughout the years in kitchens has really impacted my passion for cooking and I just think it's time I take a break from it and venture off. That's a grown up decision I'm making for myself and I thank everybody that's supported me throughout these years of me becoming a chef but it's time I do what's best for me and move on and try other things. I'm about to become an actor y'all. This this is this is a dream come true. Seriously. So thank y'all for hearing me out. I know this is a very long episode but I really hope I've touched some lives and most of all, I hope if you are verbally abusing somebody out there that you change for the better because it's not gonna help you. All you're gonna do is beg people for forgiveness and some of those people will forgive you and some of them won't. But thank y'all. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with all your peers. What, 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 beep, beep.